there is so much information out there that if you put out one perfect piece of content, it's not going to get any response. But if you put out quality content over time, over time, and over time, eventually you're going to get some response back. I can see the whole wide world with these two eyes. And I can be whoever I want to be because it's my life. Hi, thanks for tuning in for another episode of Ask Spurl CPA. Today, Edmonton Business Coach talking about why perfectionists lose at business. Again, Edmonton Business Coach talking about why perfectionists lose at business. I have May here with me today. May, have you seen some business owners take too long on some decisions? Oh, yes, yes, especially when we're talking anything in regards to their business plan. They can take hours and hours and still get nowhere. <laughs> yeah, so Gary Vaynerchuk quote on the issue, he says, there's no such thing as perfect. Chasing perfect is the shortest road to not achieving it. And the statistic that we have here are 50% of all Canadian businesses will go out of business in the first five years, and 29% of these failed business owners will list running out of cash is one of the primary reasons for their failure, making running out of cash the second most common reason for business failure. And the story that we have here, business owners, they're so concerned with perfection that they don't accomplish the major milestones quick enough to survive. And generally they run out of cash because they don't get to those major milestones because they wanted that milestone to be absolutely perfect before moving on to the next one. So mate, what are the questions that these business owners should be asking? What is a minimal viable product? So the minimal viable product is that minimum product. So the absolute minimum that you can do that you can actually sell it to somebody. It's available for sale, whether that's a product or service, you know, it might not be the dream product or service that you envision or the entire product line or the entire service line. But what is the first step that I could possibly get to where it's adding enough value that someone's going to start buying it from me? Uh, that minimal viable product is a huge consideration. You should know exactly what it is and you know you should work it out in your head. Not just what the uh, end product looks like, but what is that minimal viable product? Let's get to that one first. Will that initial revenue sometimes be the only way to fund a better product? Yeah, sometimes if you don't get to that minimal viable product, even if you know exactly what that better product looks like, that ultimate product or service offering looks like, if you don't generate that initial revenue, you're gonna run out of cash and try to develop that uh, better product. You know, you wanna get that minimal viable product first, get that to market, start monetizing that, get some cash flow coming from that, and you can use that if you want to, you know, fund the development of a better product or service. Does launching the minimal video product provide the best market research? Yeah, so the you know we talk about the minimal viable product and you know, we might run out of cash. Let's say we got a lot of cash and we it doesn't matter. We don't think it's necessary for us to launch a minimal viable product because we have enough cash to complete the development phase. Well, just because you think that's the best you know product or service offering doesn't mean the market is going to think that's the best product and service offering. And you can run as much market testing as you like, but it, there's nothing like launching. There's nothing act, actually launching the product or service to see what the feedback from actual real live customers are going to be. So the other value of getting your minimal viable product is A, it's, it's cheaper, but B, even if you have enough money, you should consider going to your minimal viable product because you're gonna start getting customer feedback that's gonna put you in a better position to develop an ultimate uh, product or service offering. Should you ever be completely satisfied with your product or service? Yeah, and, and people think that uh, um, you know getting to that product or service, that's like a, a, a milestone. It's like building the business, you know, doing the tenant improvements for the business. But you should actually never be satisfied with your product or service offering. You should actually think about it in terms of, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to be ever finished developing this product or service. At this development of the product and services is actually the ongoing task of the business. And the minute you stop developing that product or service, you know, the minute the the competitors catch up for you. So we need to, as business owners, we need to stop thinking about, you know, getting to that product or service offering and getting to that launch stage in terms of we get to a minimal viable product and we improve that product and service forever for as long as we want to stay in business. 
Should you permanently block time to continually improve your product or service? Yeah, so it's one thing to say we're going to continually improve our product and service, but once we get busy and orders start to flow in and we start to grow a team, when is the time in our calendar to actually improve that product or service? And you know what gets scheduled gets done. So if you don't put it on your calendar, you're not going to actually improve that product or service. So you know, let's get to that minimal viable product and then permanently block product and service development time into your calendar. Do customers often value complete and on time more than perfect? Yeah. So uh, sometimes, you know, complete and on time, that's higher in the customer's ranking. You know, sometimes as a business, as a, as a business owner, we're an artist in that technician. We want it to be absolutely perfect. But the customer is more concerned if they can get it quicker. Um, and a lot of times the customer is going to value it more that it's simply done and it's on time rather than it being perfect. Uh, you know, a lot of times we have to realize that the, the customer, this isn't their, um, it's not their passion. You know, they're, they're hiring you because it's, it's not their passion. And although that, you know, sometimes the situation calls for perfect, a lot of times it, the customer is more concerned that it's complete and on time. And we have to recognize is the customer demanding it to be perfect or is the entrepreneur's ego demanding that it to be perfect uh, and then make your decision from there. Is it often the entrepreneur's ego that demands perfection rather than the customer? Exactly. Yeah, that's exact, exactly it. So the, the entrepreneur thinks that the customer wants it, but really it's just the entrepreneur wants to say that, you know, this is like my personal net worth statement is how I do this one project. And when the customer really just wants it quicker, they want it quicker. They want it yesterday. They don't care if it's 90%. That's great. They wanted it yesterday. And if you take a month and it's perfect, they are going to be absolutely uh, unhappy with you because it wasn't on time when they wanted it. So a lot of times they, the entrepreneur thinks that that's the customer's demand, but where that's their own ego telling them they need to make it perfect. And you know, we're, we're likely never going to satisfy uh, that ego in, in, in it being perfect. So we just need to get it out the door. They get the product or service out the door. Is perfection normally scalable or econo economical? That's the other thing, is, is perfection is normally not scalable. I mean, look at, at automakers. Um, their cars break down once in a while. If, if they waited to develop a car that would never break down, you know, it, they would never be able to do it in any sort of volume or for any sort of price point that the average person could ever afford. So perfection, we want to have a good quality, a high quality of product or service always. But perfect is an unattainable goal, uh, and it's neither scalable nor, you know, even if you could do it at scale, the customer couldn't afford to pay you for it uh, in most circumstances. So, um, you know, perfection is not scalable or economical, and we should focus on developing a high quality product or service rather than a perfect product or service. Do entrepreneurs underestimate the amount of marketing content required? Yeah, most entrepreneurs, you know, when we're talking about why perfectionists lose at business, is they absolutely underestimate the amount of, of content they're going to have to put out there in order to attract um, attract customers. So, um, you know, if you're trying to be perfect, that's going to be very, very difficult. You need way more content online these days. There's so much information out there that if you put out one perfect piece of content, it's not going to get any response. But if you put out quality content over time, over time, and over time, eventually you're going to get some response back. Will trying to make every piece of content prevent you from re reaching customers? Yeah. So if you're trying to make every piece of content perfect, it's going to be very difficult to reach the customers because you're just not going to get enough out there, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not you know producing the worst quality content. Uh, uh, that's not what I'm saying. But it was producing a decent quality content but way more volume of it, you know, um, 10 pieces of good quality content will run circles around, you know, one piece of perfect content, you know, and certainly a hundred pieces of quality content will run circles around uh, one piece of, uh, you know, perfect content. So, um, you know, that time you're spending on trying to make your marketing initiatives perfect, that content perfect, it's actually preventing you from reaching the customers and when it's supposed to be, that's supposed to be enabling you to reach the customers. Can the lack of perfection in marketing content make you appear more authentic? 
Yeah, so that's the other thing too, is, is some customers, they actually like it, that they know that, okay, this isn't you know some polished video that they spent uh, hours and hours in post-production and, and reviewing it and getting the statements exactly right every time. This is exactly who they are and, and it, they're just gonna be more authentic and more likely to believe you. So sometimes in that imperfection, it actually helps you build trust because the customer knows you're not being fake about it. Mm -hmm. You know, that this is the actual people of the business. These are their thoughts. This is how they communicate. Um, you know, I believe that, you know, once I, I go into that business, that that's, that's how I'm going to be treated. So, you know, there's a lot of areas where, where perfectionism, you know, can, can help you lose, you know, it won't let you get to that minimal viable product and get a, you know, something out there that's going to start generating revenue in a way to, to test the customers, you know, um, you know, perfection is something that we strive for, not something that we ever attain. And, and the amount of content we need these days to put out there so people actually buy from us in the first place is completely, you know, incongruent with trying to be perfect with that content. We just need so much more of it. So I think that's what we have here today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, we would enjoy any comments that you'd like to leave below so we can answer back and use your ideas for future videos. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe button so we continue to deliver you tips on how to beat the odds of business. Thanks very much.